Hi, this is my review of Mifarog, Mythic Fantasy Role Playing Game. This is a fantasy RPG by Bark Vickerness. It's very different from other more um, generic uh, fantasy role playing games because it combines horror, mythology, folklore, everything in a very coherent way. Now let's talk about the quality of the book and the beautiful map that comes with it. The map is, let's talk about the map first, it's, it's very beautiful. It's high quality, it's going to last you for a long time. It shows the land of Thul, it's the place where the game is taking place. It's the campaign setting of the game. And the book itself is very sturdy, it's built to last as well, and um, I think this is the tallest book in my collection of role-playing games, uh, role-playing uh, books. The, the paper is great, the, the ink is good as well. You have uh, just a few illustrations every now and then, just uh, showing uh, some weapons and some symbols related to deities and, and uh, theories and spiritual traditions. And it's uh, the, the cover is just amazing, I really like the, the cover. I, I, at first I thought it, that was a dragon, but it's actually a, a fire Eden. The book is, is very well written, everything is explained in a very clear way. And there are no typos. I think I saw one typo near the end of the book, but I, I can't find the right place. Mm, and there is some, some errata, but it's minimal, it's like six or seven things. There, there's also one thing that, that I think could improve the book, it's the um, addition of an, of an index and perhaps a, a glossary at the end, but it's all very well structured. There are also a couple of things that uh, I think, I don't know if they are out of place or something. So for example, you have this table over here, right here, that uh, lists the different uh, species of, of men in, in Mifarog, and you have the the copper mother and the jarlinger and the jarun mother but i think the the jar the jarlinger should be um changed for air mother because the jarlinger is a subspecies of the um air mother so i think it makes more sense to if it were copper mother uh air mother and jarun mother you also have a um, a list of abbreviations here and it's very complete, but I, the, the A mod abbreviation is missing. Or maybe it was left out um, because of a certain context that I am not aware of, but I'm just pointing those things out in case, I don't know, for uh, version 1.4 or something. This is version 1.2, and I think uh, version 1.3 already came out. But the book is, is just... It's very uh, well written and, as I was telling you, very uh, clear. And the cool thing is that uh, sp spread out uh, throughout the entire book, there are different uh, words of wisdom. There are Havamal stanzas and uh, sort of like like proverbs and, and verses that contain a lot of I don't know of food for thought, of material to to reflect on and. I don't know, just sit back and think about those things. It's all um, a lot of um, European wisdom and just uh, phrases that have to do with the common sense. And so for example, this one here says, do not cry before you are hurt. And this other, success is, the, is dependent on effort. And there are a lot of, of cool things here. So you can meditate on them and see how they apply to your life. That's something that's, um, that adds to the educational value of this book because this book effectively feels like an educational tool and it makes sense because in the de dedicatory at the, at the beginning, Bart says that uh, this book was originally uh, created as an educational tool for homeschooling. So this is one of the, 
of those RPGs that have a really high educational value, even if if someone mm, just bought it for the pleasure of reading it, it would certainly be worth the the money. Now let's talk about the content itself. Mifarog is a fairly complex game. It's medium complexity. You can make it more complex if you wish by adding a lot of optional rules but you can start uh, at your own pace just applying uh, the rules that you are um, that you think are, are easier for you but I highly recommend that you play it with, with all the rules it's going to be an awesome experience so it's a game that's medium complexity but, uh, but you can make it as deep and, and as complex as, as you want and you only need uh, three six-sided dice to play this game and of course uh, paper and pencil uh, however when it comes to combat I think it works even better if you have miniatures you can do it on a piece of paper maybe perhaps using a grid or just some uh, measuring tape but if you really want to get tactical uh, I think miniatures work great with this game and let's talk about character creation character creation is not difficult but it's um, mm, a somewhat lengthy process there are 19 steps to creating your character I think that those who have never played a role-playing game before should visit the mifarrock.org website or, or Bark's YouTube channel so, so you can find different videos, uh, tutorials on how to create characters and more things about the rules but as I was telling you, it's not really difficult to create a character, it's just a lengthy process and you start uh, generating stats and the stat generation process is cool because you roll uh, three six-sided dice twice to represent uh, your character's mother and, and father so it's kind of like uh, getting the best genes from each pool and that's the way you get your attributes and then you, you pick your, your race now in, in Mifarog there are three uh, species of, of men which are the Copper Mother who are very like uh, very savage with wrinkled skin and uh, fang-like teeth, ah, you know. So it's they're kind of almost like the bad guys of the game. N not exactly. The, the, they certainly serve as such. They they could serve as uh, pointed out in one of the text boxes. Uh, they serve. They could serve as goblins or orcs if you want them to. And there's also the Iron Mother, who are, let's say, uh, a step above in terms of evolution, above the Copper Mother. But they are still. They're not that bright but they are um, brave and, and capable and then you have the protagonists of the game this is the race that you're going to play as and this is the the Jaron mother and the Jaron mother are handsome strong intelligent they're the, the stars of the show and each uh, subspecies has different characteristics as well some limitations and background information and then you start generating the rest, generating the rest of your character, such as uh, gender and um, social class, racial traits. Now, when it comes to social class, it's very interesting. You play as nobles, but you may lose your noble status according to different transgressions or crimes. Maybe you will end up as a free man, or maybe as an outlaw or or a thrall. So it, it's a a fairly deep. Um, social class system that has different benefits or, or penalties according to your class and then you have uh, you have to determine birthplace, life stance and cultural background there are many other things that have to do with I don't know uh, aesthetics uh, such as the the tribe name alignment however um, these details also have to, uh, to do a lot with the game with the way your character is developing and moving in the world of, of Mifarog or, or more specifically in Thul because um, for example alignment is not going to be just like uh, chaotic evil or lawful good it's more like it has to do more with your um, the way your character acts in life maybe your character is very, very materialistic or very spiritual and it's more like a psychological profile you also have um, character skills and let me tell you there are a lot of skills in this game you have skills for almost everything and 
they're all very well designed with a lot of details. If, if there's something that that defines the the core system of Mifa Rogue, it's it's detail. You have a, a lot of things. In, in other games, you have the I don't know the climbing skill, but here there are a lot of modifiers and circumstances that will affect uh, the way you climb. Even if you climb up or down a tree, it's going to be f uh, fairly different. And a lot of the skills also affect combat and spell casting, so it's, it's all very well um, thought out in my opinion. You also get uh, talents that allow you to be better and at a specific set of, of activities. And of course you can create uh, characters that are, are sort of like spellcasters, but spellcasting in this game have to do, has to do more with your character's personal view of the world. For, so for example, if your character is, is religious, you're going to be asking the deities for favors, or you're not actually casting spells, you're asking deities to cast spells for you. And if you're more like a, a traditional uh, caster, uh, you're going to try to manipulate or, or work with the forces of, of nature and cast the spells yourself. And uh, the divine or the religious spellcaster depends more on favor points and on sacred places to cast he or, or to call divine aid. And your traditional spellcaster or the Said Mother is going to depend more on um, elemental attributes and on his stamina. So it's, it's, it's very different. Both roles are, are kind of quite different. And of course, when, once you finish creating your character, there is also room for development and advancement based on the experience points you will gain as you uh, adventure in the world of Thul. Now let's talk about combat. Combat in this game feels very much alive. It feels very organic. This, it's obvious that this book was, was written with the intention of creating a simulation of reality, not just a, a game. It, it tried to, to emulate reality as much as possible because in many other role-playing games, combat feels, I don't know, a bit too perfect. Your character is always stays in, in one place unless he, he wishes to, to move to someplace else. And you, I don't know, you always have a secure footing, but here uh, the chaos of combat is expressed very well. You're going to have uh, to be moving around uh, um, randomly, almost randomly, according to, to the actions of your opponent. You may lose your balance and you may lower your guard because you become exhausted or fatigued. So it's a uh, very real, realistic combat, especially if you use all the optional rules. And it, it's quite lethal if you... Skill is everything, and intelligence. Most of the skills are affected by intelligence. And if you are more skilled in, in battle than your opponent, the battle will probably end, end pretty quickly. However, th there are uh, moments when, when the opponents of uh, the same level of skill will fight and things could drag on unless you take advantage of of terrain, maybe you're going to position yourself uh, around a certain place where, where your enemy will have to move someplace else where there's a rock or a tree and he won't be able to, to take advantage of his uh, dodge bonus and you'll uh, take advantage of that opening and strike and it's very easy to die in this game and it's also very easy to end up uh, knocked out or, or infected so it feels very real, very gritty now, when it comes to to the setting itself, it's like a, a very realistic version of, of, I don't know, mythological or even uh, prehistorical uh, in parts of Europe. There are many um, cultures that resemble or mirror cultures in, in real life. There are also bands, cults, organizations, uh, and you're going to recognize some of them. Yes, you're going to, to smile a bit sometimes and oh, I know who they are, the, the different uh, bands and cults and organizations. And sorcery is fairly deep and even though sorcery here it has some over-the-top spells, because uh, the game is handled in a very realistic way, it feels uh, those spells even feel quite real and there are so many rules and and things that you have to, to follow if you're going to, to be, for example, a traditional spellcaster. There are many taboos that you shouldn't break or you're going to lose your ability to, to cast spells. And I, I forgot to mention something very cool, which is the, um, the role that you play as your character, character roles. You have uh, many 
I don't know, staples uh, from, from many epic sagas. You start out as a Buandi or, or peasant, and, or a Vedi mother, which is a hunter-gatherer. Uh, but you, after um, certain requirements, uh, which remind, remind me a lot of the requir requirements to get a, a prestige class in other games, you may end up as a streets mother or warrior, a uh, sport mother or stalker, a uh, guinar or trickster, a uh, vacante or mena, which is basically a fanatic of the deity Bacchus. Mm, you can end up as a. Uh, this is my favorite. Everybody loves berserker. So the the Ein Harry, which is a berserker, and if your character is female, she will end up as a Valkyria. Mm, you could also end up as a Skog Border, which is a ranger, or a Skald, or a Skaldmire if you're female, and that, which is basically a, a bard. And the, the the hardest role to fulfill, in my opinion, because of different requirements and taboos, but probably one of the most fulfilling because of its flexibility in um, casting different spells, is the said Mother that I was telling you about, the Sorcerer, because uh, as I was telling you, the, the Sorcerer isn't restricted to to um, gaining favor from deities. The said Mother casts his or her own spells. What else? Oh, of course, of course, there's a great chapter on, on creatures and phenomenal tool. It's like a bestiary chapter, and you have uh, even a, like a table, so you can generate NPCs wi with varying power levels, so you can challenge your uh, your players. And you get all the the staple monsters from um, European mythology: elves, nymphs, trolls, Etons, But they're all uh, handled in a very more like a folkloric way, not, not so fictional, uh, that has a, a firm mythological basis of sorts. And at the end you have uh, names and high festivals, and you have an appendix and uh, creature statistics and, car and a lot of uh, sheets for the game. You have character sheets, and you also have uh, sheets for the game master, which is called a, a myth master in this game. So you can track different things in the game. Let, let me show you the character sheet so you can see it's fairly uh, deep in detail there's a lot of stuff here there are also uh, sheets that help you run combat and keep track of your equipment well let me tell you what I think about this game this game is just great <laughs> I, I love that games, those games with ha that have a lot of, of rules, of lots and lots of rules, because if you want to keep things simple, okay, you don't use those rules and you play a, sort of like a rules light game, but if you ever need, have the need of, oh, I want to cover this situation, or, or how do I handle this or that, and you're going to uh, have the rules for it uh, right here in this book. And uh, they're like, kind of like tools at your disposal, so that's, that's pretty good. The setting is great as well, it has this, I don't know, epic and, and gritty uh, flavor at the same time. It's, it's very well done, and adventures here, because of the different skills, you can have all sort of, any sort of adventure that you want. Maybe you're um, chasing bandits, or maybe you're just trying to protect a, a sacred place. Um, or maybe you're trying to, to get a specific job or, or character role and you're going to um, live that character's life you're going to be hunting and trying to survive each day and you're going to um, fight honorable duels and you're going to be fighting against horrible monsters because the Athens, like, like the one in, in the cover they're just huge and you won't be able to defeat them at all even if you have a lot of experience you will need um, a lot of, of people to, to fight against that monster and, and weaken that monster with arrows and spears first. If you try to go one-on-one -on -one with that monster as with other games, you're going to, be, you're going to get killed. So the, uh, it, there's a lot of realism even there. There aren't uh, really negative points to this game. I think it's most likely, likely that some people could not mm, agree with certain things of the setting because this is a a very unapologetic game. This Mifarok presents you a version of Thul uh, that mm, has 
many details about um, sexuality, uh, religion, um, what else, uh, races, uh, social class, etc. And, and, and groups and, and cults and some people may feel like their sensibilities are, are threatened by certain depictions but this is a, a, a game that stays true to its roots it's not going to be like oh sorry that I heard your sensibilities there there now this game is kind of like this is Mifa Rock and this is Thul if, if you don't like it change some things but this is still Mifa Rock or that's the way I kind of feel uh, that this game presents itself as so I highly recommend this this game. If you are tired of generic fantasy role-playing games, get this one, and it's 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 great. The, I really can't find a stronger negative point about this game. Usually, I would say something that the rules aren't for any, everyone or anything, but it, so much work went into this this project, this um, mythological European experience then you should definitely try it and visit the, the website because you're going on Bark's YouTube channel I'm going to put the links in the description below because there are a lot of videos with all the research he carried out uh, when, when it comes to combat and, and skills and uh, tutorials it's a very well done game <laughs> well thanks for watching my review if you have any, any comments or questions uh, please let me know see you later